Welcome to Last Night in Basketball. I'm Jared Dubin, and this is Friday Film Findings. Chris Depp's Porzingis has supercharged the Boston Celtics offense. That may sound strange to say about a player who's outside the top 50 in points per game, but we're gonna show you exactly why that's the case. It all starts with the pick and roll, where Porzingis has been one of the most dangerous threats in the NBA so far this season. A big reason for that is that teams simply do not want to play drop coverage against him. It's too dangerous for a variety of reasons. If the guy guarding the ball handler doesn't fight over strongly enough, you give up a walk in three. If he does fight over and you're still in the drop, well, guess what? You're going to give up a pick and pop three to Porzingis from the top of the key. So even though the drop is the most common coverage in the league, teams often have to resort to something else. Porzingis has seen drop less often than every high volume screener in the league this season. They're trying to find all kinds of different solutions. Kevin Love right here is in stay attached coverage, but all that does is give Drew Holiday a drive to the lane. If that doesn't work, maybe you try something else. The Knicks switched this pick and roll between Drew and Porzingis, but all that does is leave Mitchell Robinson on an island against Drew Holiday. That's not gonna work either. Okay, so maybe you try blitzing instead. Send two guys to the ball. Well, KP will just slip that one right to the rim and even if he misses, everybody there is small so he can grab the rebound and finish. So you can't just blitz. You gotta blitz and send some help. Two guys to the ball, Porzingis rolls through the middle of the lane, and the corner guy ducks off his man to help. But when he does, that just leaves Derek White open in the corner for three. So you gotta blitz, you gotta send help, but not too much help. But when you try to do that, you just get caught in no man's land. It's a corner three for Derek White again. It wasn't quite as complicated last year. Boston center was Robert Williams, and he's not a threat outside the immediate area of the rim, so it was basically all hard rolls. Either that or he'd just stand his ground, hold the screen, and watch the ball handler pull up for three right behind him. But there's an even bigger difference with the center on the floor, and he's not the guy setting the screen. When Time Lord was in the game, he was almost always in the dunker spot, you know, lurking along the baseline, trying to mooch off the central action so he can grab himself a dunk. But because he wasn't a threat outside the rim, Defenders could just sag all the way off him when he was in the dunker spot. That clogs the lane, doesn't allow for drives. Obviously, this is a huge difference between him and Porzingis. Williams is a dunker. Porzingis, he's a shooter, a scorer. He's a threat from everywhere. So you don't have to just stash him in the dunker spot. Look what happens when you stash him in the corner. Bam Adebayo basically stands still, and Jason Tatum can drive to the lane for a dunk. Porzingis gets this type of treatment because he's a really good shooter. Give him even a sliver of space and that dude is gonna fire away. And not just fire, but probably connect. He's shooting 45% from three so far this season. And that's a huge factor whether he's in the pick and roll or not. When somebody else has the ball and KP's just spacing, his man can't help all that aggressively. A lot of times his man basically just stands still. Isaiah Jackson has two feet outside the lane when Tatum begins this drive. And when he finishes, Isaiah Jackson still has two feet outside the lane. Tatum gets an easy layup. It's the same thing here. Mitchell Robinson wants to help, but he also knows that he can't stray too far from his man. That gives Tatum enough space and enough freedom to work his way into a jumper over Grimes. It also works when you want to send somebody into the post. You can even invert the court by putting a guard down there, having the center space the floor. Miles Turner has both feet outside the lane for the entirety of this Drew Holiday post up. He never comes over to help, not even close. So Drew gets himself an easy layup at the rim. Even if the defender wants to come over and help, by the time he makes sure he can, he can't get there in time. Obi Toppin isn't even close to getting help on Jalen Brown here. Then there's the threat of Porzingis as a post-up man himself. Boston's posting much more often this season than it did a year ago, and Porzingis is a huge reason why. Last year, he had his best post-up season of his career, and this year, he's been even better. And it's not just scoring either. These days, he's reading multiple layers of help and zipping the right pass across the floor to an open shooter. All this stuff is hell for defenses to deal with. Even when it seems like you've got the initial action covered, like the Heat do here, things don't work out. Miami sends three guys to the ball on the pick and roll, and even recovers to KP in time before he can shoot. So he just goes right into another pick and roll with Tatum, and then he's got a mouse in the house. That triggers all kinds of help. The low man has to come over. The corner man has to drop down. All that help leaves Jalen Brown wide open for a corner three. Doesn't get any better than that. That's what Boston's doing to opposing defenses this season. Once again, this has been Last Night in Basketball. I'm Jared Dubin. Head on over to lastnightinbasketball.com and subscribe today.